Forget about a target dollar amount to reach financial independence. I use a way better metric. Everyone's portfolio is gonna have massive swings up and down throughout our investing journey as the market booms and busts. Focusing on my portfolio value just sets me up for depression. I would overestimate my progress only to snap back to reality at the next market correction. A much better metric to focus on is share count. Let me show you what I mean. For quick context, financial independence is when the profit from our investments cover our basic expenses for life. This can mean early retirement on one hand, or it can just mean pursuing a job, hobby, or volunteering on something that you actually love. With our basic expenses covered, the number of options explode. For instance, I can't afford to be a full-time Reddit moderator before financial independence, but after. Anyway, back to the example. Let's use the S&P 500 as our benchmark, specifically VOO. That's Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, which is currently at $461 per share. The first question is, how many shares do I need today of VOO to be financially independent right now? If I need $50,000 to cover my basic annual expenses, then my portfolio value would need to be 25 times that amount. This calculation is known as the 4% rule. Basically, you withdraw 4% from your portfolio initially in the first year, and then all following years, you increase that amount by inflation. The 4% rule is highly debated. Many people say it's far too aggressive, but that is a topic for another video. Let me know in the comments if you plan to use the 4% rule. So $50,000 times 25, which is the same thing as dividing by 4%, is $1.25 million. This means I would need 2,711 shares of VOO to be financially independent today. Unfortunately, that is not a reasonable goal for me. Let's say my goal was to achieve financial independence in 10 years. How many shares of VOO would I need in the year 2034 to be financially independent? Let me give you a hint way less than 2,711. Over the last 30 years, the S&P 500 has an average annualized return of just over 8%. If we adjust for inflation and keep all of our numbers in terms of today's dollars, then that average annualized return drops to about 5.5%. That means in 10 years, one share of VOO adjusted for inflation will be worth roughly $745. If we do the same math as before, using a yearly spend of $50,000, then I would need 1,674 shares of VOO to have financial independence in the year 2034. That's more than a 1,000 share difference than what I would need to retire today. Let's look at a second example. If my goal was a little bit more conservative and I wanted to reach financial independence in 20 years, that's the year 2044, then a single share of VOO would be worth about $1,276. Once again, adjusted for inflation, needing a yearly spend of $50,000 per year, that means I only need 980 shares of VOO to be financially independent in 20 years. It gets even better when we expand on that. If I were able to buy 980 shares today, which is worth about $450,000 at today's price, then in the future, 20 years later, I would have way more than 980 shares thanks to dividend reinvestment. This strategy is known as DRIP, which stands for Dividend Reinvestment Plan. The average annualized return of the S&P 500 goes up to 7.5% when dividends are reinvested into buying additional shares. After accounting for the drip, we would only need to buy 689 shares today, and then with dividends reinvested, that would become 980 shares in 20 years. Buying 689 shares today would cost me $317,000, which is a huge improvement over 1.25 million, but that is still a huge sum of money. Let's look at a more realistic example of dividend reinvestment. For one, smashing the like button, that pays dividends. Two, let's look at a more realistic starting point. I have some savings to buy some shares, but not 689 shares. For this example, let's say I'm 30 years old and I wanna hit financial independence by the time I'm 50. That's technically 21 years, my target will be 645 shares of VOO. Whether the market goes up or down in the meantime, I don't care, I'm just stacking up the shares. If I have $50,000 saved up between all of my accounts, that's 15,000 in my 401k, 15,000 in my Roth IRA, 7,000 in my HSA, and 13,000 in my brokerage account, 
then I can afford to buy 108 shares right now. That means I have just 581 shares to go, right? Not exactly. By the time I hit 50 years old, that original 108 shares with dividend reinvestment will buy 52 shares all on its own. That gives me a total of 160 shares. Every share I buy early on will generate more shares of VOO. From here on out, if I commit to buying 20 shares of VOO every year with drip, then by the time I'm 50 years old, I will have 645 shares of VOO. And I only had to actually buy 508 shares with money out of my pocket thanks to drip. With this mentality, market downturns are no longer a source of stress for me. It's just an opportunity for me to buy more shares for less money. Now, I must admit, I have not been entirely honest. VOO might be one of the most popular ETFs out there, but it is not my ETF of choice. A higher annualized return allows me to cut years off of my financial independence timeline. Check out this video where I go over how to find ETFs that can outperform the S&P 500. Catch you on the flip side.